this video I'm going to show you how to subtract fractions. So subtracting fractions is just like adding fractions in that you need to have a common denominator before you're allowed to subtract. So in the first example we need to find the lowest common multiple of 10 and 3. Now lowest common multiple is sometimes written as LCM and it's basically just the smallest number that both 10 and 3 fit into exactly. So in this one it's going to be 30. Now it doesn't matter if you can't find the LCM or the lowest common multiple, as long as it's a number that both 10 and 3 fit into exactly then that's fine. It just means that you'll have to do some simplifying further on in the calculation. So we're not allowed to just change the denominator without changing the numerator. So let's have a look at how we got from this first fraction to over here. So in order to get from 10 to 30, I have to multiply 10 by 3. So I'm going to do the same thing with the numerator. I'm going to multiply that 9 by 3 as well. So 9 multiplied by 3 gives me 27. Okay, it's important that you multiply by the same number here as you do here because that's how we find something called the equivalent fraction. So these fractions are actually identical, they're the same fraction. We're just rewriting it like this so that we can subtract afterwards. Okay, so for the second fraction, this time to get from 3 to 30, we must multiply by 10. So I do the same thing with the numerator again. I multiply that 1 by 10. So 1 times 10 is 10. Now that I've got the common denominators, I can do the subtraction. So just like with the addition, the denominator stays the same. It's only the numerators that we're subtracting. So 27 minus 10 is 17. And that's finished because we can't simplify that fraction. Okay, now onto the second one. Again, we're looking for the LCM, the lowest common multiple of 5 and 4. So the smallest number that both 5 and 4 fit into exactly. So in this one, it's 20. Now, if you're good at your times tables, you should be able to find these numbers quite quickly. Um, but like I said before, it doesn't matter if you don't find the lowest common multiple, as long as it's a number that these numbers both fit into exactly, that's fine. So in order to get from five to 20, I have to multiply by four. So I do the same again with the numerator. I have to multiply this number by four as well. So, 4 multiplied by 4 gives me 16. Now for the second fraction. To get from this number 4 to 20, I must multiply by 5. So I do the same with the numerator on this fraction. I multiply this by 5 as well. So, 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, now that I've got my equivalent fractions over here and the common denominators, I can subtract the two fractions. So remember, the denominator always stays the same. The numerators we're going to subtract. So 16 take away 15 is 1. And that's the final answer. Okay, now onto the last one. So we've got mixed numbers this time. So just like in my other videos, I recommend you turn these mixed numbers into improper fractions. So if you don't know how to turn mixed numbers into improper fractions, I have another video explaining how to do so. So for the moment, I'll just assume that you know how to do that. So turning these into improper fractions. Okay, so to get that one, I did three times four plus one, and over here, one times three plus two is five. Okay, so that's the first step. Turn any mixed numbers into improper fractions. Now, it's just like the previous two examples. We need to find the common denominators. So the lowest common multiple of four and three, so these numbers here, is 12. So you can fill in the denominators. Now to find the numerators. To get from four to 12, I multiply by 3. So again, you do the same thing with the numerator and you multiply that number 13 by 3 as well. So that gives me 39. Now for the second fraction, to get from 3 to 12, you multiply by 4. So again, you do the same thing with the numerator and you times that number 5 by 4 as well. So 5 times 4 is 20. 
Now that I've got my common denominator, I can subtract. Remember, the denominator stays the same. It's only these numbers we're subtracting. So 39 minus 20 is 17. Okay, so that's, oh, not 17. What am I talking about? 19. Okay, so I can't simplify that fraction, but I can turn it into a mixed number. So maybe in the exam question, it will ask you to turn your final answer into a mixed number. So if you have to do that at the end, how many 12s in 19? One. What's left over? Seven. So that remainder goes on top there. Okay, but you don't need to do that. It's only if the question asks you to leave your final answer as a mixed number, then you need to do that. So something that's important when we're subtracting that's different to the addition is when we're adding, the order of the fractions was not important. But when we're subtracting, you have to be careful that you don't change the order. So for example, in this one here, we're doing four fifths minus one quarter. Make sure that fraction stays as the first fraction. So don't write it over here instead. Make sure it's still the first fraction, otherwise you're going to get the wrong answer. So I hope that's a bit clearer now with subtracting fractions and fractions in general if you've been looking at the other videos. And I'm sure with more practice you won't need to draw all these arrows and lines in. Uh, you'll be able to do it in your head. So uh, anyway, thank you for listening and goodbye for now.